Good evening everybody and a very warm welcome to Mildenhall and Districts and my name is Susanna and I live with trains and today happy Easter to you all first of all um, today's going to be more like a little bit of a layout update uh, more than anything else um, so I wanted to sort of start by and it mainly features lighting but I'm going to start with something that I got this a couple of weeks ago or a week ago and I got one of this model makers LED head magnifier kit and it's by Batman as you can see their little logo there and this is what it's like um, just like a set of glasses that you just put over on and then and the reason why I got this is um, because of the little people now if you, uh, my last video I showed you that I bought some little people for the layout but they were unpainted and so obviously um, that just helps with the detail and painting in like the ties and the finer detail and making sure that the people look right and I painted them and actually it's made the job a lot more um, enjoyable and quicker than how I've been doing it previously so it's I actually don't mind so much buying people that are unpainted so much now because I've got this and it helps me get through them a bit quicker and it's one of those things that once you buy, you kind of wonder how you kind of got on without it. So it's proven to be very useful, not only just for the little people, but also just to really look at certain things. Um, so another one of those products that I'm going to sh that I'm going to show you now is um, that you can't that I've found that since I've had it, I'm just just like a relief for having it was this Vegan. Now I had showed it previously. And basically, it's like a light for your tripod and it gives you extra light and you just slide it into your tripod and then you use the disc to tighten it up. And then you can adjust the um, the brightness and you can just adjust the color and the filter. So it can go from like clear, uh, from like bright white to kind of like a yellow. Um, so depending on how you want to use it, you can just adjust it using the two dials at the back. And then you just use a USB to charge it at the back um, and I found it so useful because recently I've been working on the layout and working at the back end of the layout so it's proven to be very very useful indeed so now I'm just going to show you what I've been up to so just so you can get so just so you can just get your bearings um, this is where we are on top of the layout and then we usually have a skirt and the fascia underneath like here's the skirt here and there's the fascia so if I pull the skirt up um, You'll see what, I've, what I'm going to show you as to what I've been doing, but here it's not that bright, is it? So if we use the VGM, um, that will kind of light up the way. And this is how how great it is. It's just I found it so useful. And also, like I said, you can adjust the filter so you can make it more yellow or brighter white. But anyway, um, so what I've been up to under here is basically I've just been tidying up the wiring because there's been so much wiring just dangling down and hanging down that I've actually just been tidying it all up um, because I've added some more um, lighting around here and I just wanted to tidy up the wiring but I just wanted to leave the power ones actually available so if I do need to nick it for testing elsewhere then I can still unplug it and, and sort of do that so that's what kind of lives under here but like I say, the skirt conceals all of this. Now, if I just sort of actually just take you over there to where the plugs are, you got the two, the two furthest on the right, and one of them's got a, a, a little bit of masking tape that says twelve volts on it, and the other one's and the other one, the blank one, is actually a three volt supply because the lighting's on two separate circuits. I've got some on twelve volts and some on three. And so these two are both multi-voltage regular um, regulated um, voltage transformers where you've got a dial on the front and then you just turn the dial to the voltage you want. So they're both exactly the same in that sense. They're both multi-voltage transformers and you just turn the dial. So I've turned the one on the right to 12 volts and the one slightly to the left of that in the middle to 3 volts. So I can use... Um, various lighting that I have without having to go faffing around having to install um, tr um, and solder um, resistors and stuff to get it all to work. So now we're just going to talk lighting 
and um, we're just going to have a see how the lighting works um, on this on this layout. Um, especially now, I've made some improvements and adjustments. Um, now, if I just press the one on, there's six buttons here, and they all do individual things. And obviously, you've got the yard lights that are here. And if I switch the lighting off, it used to start to get a better idea of what's. And then slowly, you'll see that things start to improve. Now, you've got some lights on the end of the platform, and there's some light in here. Um, these are on, um, I believe, three volt supply, and it's just a separate switch. And then as we go along, the third one along, you see now that we've got the lighting going on in the in the carriage shed. And then the fourth one along is going to be, um, as you can probably see here, that is going to be the wagon works. And actually that was the fifth one along. The fourth one is if I switch the, the fifth one off, you might see that there's a, um, bear with me a minute, I'll see if I can get closer for you. You might be able to see that there's uh, some welding going along in there. That was one of the little welding kits. I think that was from Train Tech. Um, you'll probably be able to see it sort of sparking away in a minute. I think it goes through this random sequence as you can see. So there's like a welding um, guy over there. And then in here, you can see what the inside of the shed. So that's the wagon works. And then you've got, like I said, the Wagner de Loco shed. Let's stick you back on the, on the tripod. And now with the last button, you can see that the whole platform is now lit up and there's no actual um, lighting in on, on at all in the, in the room. It's just whatever lighting is here. And like I said, I'll take you off the tripod so you can have a little bit look, bit of a closer look. So here we go. Now, in this station building, there is actually quite a lot of detail. You can't quite see it all. Um, but there is a lot of detail in there. I don't know if I can just see if I can drop you in. I don't know if you can see if we can zoom you in a bit. I don't think I can. It's just quite awkward to get over here. But there's some people in there, some ticket barriers, ticket machines. In here you've got, you've got some of the people that I've painted up. Um, some station signage. Um, station name boards and destination displays, stuff like that. Um, let me just get around here. There's some more of the wee folk that I painted up. The footbridge is now lit up. If you go around here, you can sort of have a better look at the carriage shed that's all got lit, lit up as well. This is a bit more subdued in here in the loco shed. Um, and then if you look further down. All further in. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Right, you've got a busker on the footbridge. That's what I was meant to show you. She's one of the people that I painted up. And then I've added some more um, lighting along here. This is some of the lighting that I had before. Um, and I decided to use that just to finish off the ends of the platform. Like I said here, you've got some more um, signage and stuff like that going on here. Let me see if I can, now we're a bit close, so let me see if I can just get you into. Oh, there you go, I think you can sort of see that there's ticket barriers there. Some people in there. There's also some station signage and stuff. Destination boards in there. But yeah, you can sort of have a good look. That's pretty well detailed. So here we're at Goswell Sidings. And I've done some additional work here with the lighting. So this is what you've seen already. But what you haven't seen is, um, and I'll turn it, switch the lights back on afterwards to explain it to you, but just to sort of show you. We've got some lighting here. Now what you haven't seen 
is the lighting that is now on the drop down section which I've added so this is all new this was only done today so um, I'm really pleased with that um, it would have been better if I could get and I'll explain that to you in just a jiffy I'll just switch the lights back on and then I'll show it to you but yeah I'm really pleased with that that's come out really really well so that's another little bit of an Easter project that I've been up to this week so this is the drop down section and the problem that I have with it is obviously because it's a drop down section I've got I've got a, a height limitation because of obviously when it goes back up against the wall so I couldn't put any lighting on the platform as I would have liked and, would have, and what I would have normally have done. So what I've done is, is a little trick that I did before, uh, before was to mount the um, lighting on the back scene and painted in some lines going down to make it out like these were lampposts. So, and it gives the illusion that they're lampposts, but in fact they're not. And all it is is that they're just quick release plug and play. So what I've had to do is um, um, feed a line from Goswell sidings and, and that's permanently attached to, to this bit. And then at the very end, there's a quick release connection. So that quick release connection allows um, the back scene to then be removed. And then the actual building is actually connected to the back scene. So I can show you that if I just unplug it, then you can sort of have a better idea of what I'm, what I'm talking about. So this is the building and it's connected to one of these quick release plugs. And then I just sort of, and that plugs in to the back scene. And that just quickly, just like I said, it doesn't take very long to plug it in. And then if I do the same, with the um, back scene and then that will show you how the back scene then works as well so bear with me one second that's now unplugged and as you can see the back scene is now unplugged and it like i said here it looks like you've got lamp posts and in reality, all it is is that on the back is that the lighting is daisy chained along. So this plugs into, or the station building plugs into this end to complete, and then this end plugs into the main feed and that completes the circuit and allows all the lighting to work as it is. So that's just to show you that. So at the back end of St. Anne's, um, there's also lighting here and I've added what I've done with lighting here is I've also added some more signals and these are the DAPAR ones which are these ones right down the end here and I really do love these these DAPAR signals they work really well so these are this is the, these two are the replacements for my um, for my broken one which was actually like the ones at the other end, which I'll show you. Um, but these, but these are now fitted; they're now working. But what I do have to do is tidy them up and f and, f and actually make them fit better because at the moment um, I just need to do the groundwork around it to blend them in. But they are working, so I'll just show you them working. And that one as well. So you can just see that these are now plugged in they're wired so basically there's a 12 volt bus that runs all the way around on this section and so this is connected to the 12 volt um originally dapol suggested using 16 but apparently they were burning motors out so i was told to run it on 12 which is fine and it's and it's been working fine and they both work really well just as the now if i just show you there's two push buttons There you go, there's that one. Press it again. And if I press the other one. And so that's quite cool. 
Um, I might have to adjust these trees again. I'm just trying to blend them in a bit. So, but yeah, I think they're pretty cool. Um, I do really enjoy them. I think they're really great. Um, it's not like I train controlled or anything like that. So it's just literally just push buttons. You just press the button and it does what it says on the tin. Here's another one. And um, this is the distant one. As you can probably tell, and it's showing amber at the moment. That's just superb. I love these. So I can't wait to do the cab ride. I didn't want to do the cab ride just yet because I wanted to install the rest of the lighting. So I really want to get the lighting really figured out. So that works a treat, that does. And it's, they're really simple to install, actually. Um, these single ones are definitely better than, and easier to install than the double ones. Now, this one here was was the, it's the original one that I bought. And like I said, I'd originally bought a second, second set um, for the other side. One exactly the same as this one for the other side. But the, the spring broke underneath on the servo, so the one, the, the signal on the right, just wasn't working it's just dropped and you can work it so i had to return it but in some ways it did me a favor because i ended up getting the two single ones which i actually think look better and work better anyway so i'll just give you a pan round um on the, off the layout as it stands well on this side the lighting just so you can see how effective it is at night there's no other literally there's no other lighting on apart from the lighting that you're getting from this part of the layout so there's no, there's no ceiling lights or any other. This is all literally lit up from the layout itself. So I'm going to put another one. I did have a lamp post here. I'm going to put it back in. I had to move it when I was playing about with moving this track slightly and it got in the way. And then you've got the village over here. And that looks... That looks pretty tidy, to be honest. I'm just going to zoom you out slightly. And then over on this side, this is the lighting that you get from the quarry. And the new shelf that I built, it acts as a down lighter. The, the lip acts as a down light and directs the light down onto the layout. So that gives that nice kind of glow onto the quarry. If you sort of look at it like this from a distance, you can see the kind of nighttime effect that you're getting all the way around the layout. As you can see my tripod there. And like I said, there's no other lights on. So just go down. And these are the lights just from the layout itself. So I had a comment from um, Dave over at Goodford Model Railway about putting some buffer stops on here. So I'm going to be doing that anyway. Um, but whilst we're here, um, just on the DC track, DCC track is this 57, but there's nothing actually wrong with it. I was just using it to make sure that it was working. But I just wanted to show you this 73, which is the, my latest 73 that I got. Absolutely gorgeous. It runs so smoothly. And for just a bargain price of just um, £90. So that's just like absolutely stunning. It really is. It's a really gorgeous Car 73. And just on top here, just to show you that I've got my Gauge Master um, DC walk around controller. And then I've got my Digitrax as a DCC one. And then I've got the Track ID and the Cradle there and the Track Tester there. So I've got all my various maintenance bits just here. So this concludes the end of today's video and just before we go I just wanted to address a comment from uh, I think it's Peter, he's one of my YouTubers, um, subscriptions, subscribers I should say and um, he left me a message uh, or a comment about my track plan and all I can say really is it's designed to suit me and my needs and I think that's the best way to sort of Get that message across to anyone doing it is just make sure you design it to your needs not to anybody else's um, I've, I've made that mistake before where 
I've liked somebody else's track plan or, or something like that, or you, you liked other people's parts of their layout and you're trying to incorporate and it just doesn't work for you. So you've really got to kind of work out what's right for you and, and what suits you. Um, it's not done through iTrain controller or any of those automatic programs that can create these track plans for you because it doesn't work for me. Uh, I'm not knocking anybody who uses them. It's just, it doesn't work for me. I'm the sort of person that would rather just lay the track down and just see how I get on. And, you know, if I need to add a point, I, you know, I'll just buy another point and add another point and all the rest of it. So I can get what I want. Like I said, in my last video, um, this track plan has mainly, and this layout has mainly evolved through all my other layouts and learn, learning lessons basically from my other previous layouts. Um, if anyone else has got any other questions or anything like that, please feel free to stick them on the comments below and I will try to, um, to accommodate them and answer them as best as I can on my next video, if I can. So until the next time, oh, oh yeah. I have to talk to you about a, um, a shout out. Now I don't normally do shout outs because I feel like if I do a shout out for one, I should be doing it for a lot of people. But sometimes it's quite refreshing to see um, a, a layout which is kind of different from the norm. And I come across a channel um, this week, and, or was it last week even? And I've been watching quite a few of these videos and basically it's a real different take to railway modeling in the sense of it's just, it's not straight laced, it's very funny. Um, there's a lot of comedy and humor in it. And so if you're one of those people that's kind of straight laced about things on the model railway, then maybe it's not for you. But if you've got a sense of humor, um, and in an open mind, I think it's it's kind of worth a watch. It's I've never really come across a, um, a channel like it in the sense of the way he presents it. And he's he, he's a, he's a Yorkshireman with a sense of humour, and um, and I just I, I just find it so, it's very funny. So um, if you want to, if you're interested, check out double O as in double the words double and then a zero. Um, Dave, and he's at Liberty Junction. Um, and like I said, you know, um, there's been quite a lot of negative stuff going around on YouTube recently, which I'm not particularly keen on. And um, if you want to move away from that kind of thing and you want to and you fancy a bit of something to take your mind off things and give you a bit of a giggle, then his channel will certainly give you a giggle because it had me in stitches, honestly. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's really funny. Um, well, I found it funny anyway, it was to my taste. So like I said, if you're quite straight laced about railway modeling, maybe it's not the channel for you, but like I said, if you've got an open mind and a sense of humor, go and check out Double O Dave and Liberty Junction. And um, that, will, that will probably put a smile on your face. So anyway, until the next time, it's goodbye from Milden Hall and District. My name's Susanna and I live with trains. Check him out. Bye-bye.